In this video, we are going to go through an example of each material in Game Texture Shade. Shade is a set of pre-made materials to allow you to get your jump start on your project. Let's start by making an instance of our MGT Basic material. I'm going to name this MIGT Basic for simplicity. <clears throat> and we'll open this up. As you see, we got a bunch of parameters that are exposed. I'm going to go ahead and enable um, some of these main ones here. And I'm going to turn on Use Palm Parallax Occlusion Mapping. That will give me the ability to use a height map. And inside of the shade, when you download it from the asset store, you'll get some uh, free materials and textures. Um, I'm going to start with the ground. Actually, let's, let's do the ground muddy grass. And I'm going to start plugging these into the texture slots here. That way we can get that applied and ready to go. And then I will jump back over and apply this to our test plane here. Get a nice little muddy muddy grass. And now we can sit here and, and mess with the rest of these settings. Um, I, if I want to tint the base color, I can. If I want to invert the normal, I can do that as well. Or adjust the roughness. It's all parameterized. I'm not going to make it as wet as the default. I'm going to be a little bit more rough. I don't want it to be too, too bad. Um, and then with Palm, Parallax Occlusion Mapping, I'm going to go a little crazy. I'm going to bump this up to 24 max steps. That way it's a little bit more higher detail. And I'm just going to slide the, the Parallax Occlusion Mapping. You can see it adjusting in, in the viewport. Just enough to make it make sense to the scale. You don't want it to be too crazy, especially this spot right here. That looks pretty good. And that's basically the easy basic shader that we've got going on. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a duplicate of this. Just I'll drag it over here, move it over, and we're going to make an uh, instance of the GT blend. So I'm going to create a material instance. I'm going to call this MIGT blend. We'll open that one up. As you can see, it's very similar to the one before. Only now we have a base material and a top material to blend between. So I'm going to do the same thing before. I'm going to enable all my inputs, and I'm going to turn on Parallax Occlusion Mapping. And then I'm going to turn on the other inputs for the other channel. And I think I'm going to go ahead and blend, um, let's see, the brick bath stone as my base material. Nope. Plug in all my channels here. And as my top material, I'm going to blend in the uh, ground dirt. I think that should be a good fix. Dirt, that's the DET, or detail. Okay, we got that set up. Now let's uncheck all these for the future. Uh, let's see, use palm is enabled, blend contrast and blend height. Let's go ahead and apply this material instance to this here. As you can see, it's kind of pre-blending already. That's because our vertex colors are already preset. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to minimize this out of the way. Um, and I'm going to open up our vertex painting. And I'm just going to color the red channel, because the red channel is what's being controlled. You can see here as I'm shift-clicking, it removes it all the way away. Let's turn our strength down to about 0.1. As you can see, as I click it in, it kind of gradually will fill in. You can blend it however you want. It works pretty well. So I'm going to do some pretty heavy blending. I'm just going to remove a little bit. But what's cool is when we open back in this shader here, you can see this blend contrast. If I increase or decrease, actually let me get rid of the grid real quick. You can see how it starts feathering out a little bit different. You can see on the edges right here. You can see it feathering, so it kind of it's a, a clamp for the blend. So if you want it to be really harsh, you turn it up. If you want it to be really loose and feathered, you turn it down. Works really well. So now we can go ahead and uh, you know do some parallax. The brick on the bottom is is pretty fairly flat, so I wouldn't use, worry about using parallax on here. But on the the top layer, we can we can do a little bit here to uh, make it look interesting. So there's the 
base. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm adjusting the base. Let's adjust the top layer. I'm going to adjust it enough just to kind of make it look interesting. Did there. There you go. It looks like a nice little blend of material. You can even go any further and kind of do the cracks. Blend it in like that. You got a blended material. So the next thing is really cool. I'm going to actually make a copy of the first one we just did here. Let me close this out. No, oh, I'm still in paint mode. I'm going to make a copy of this here. I'm going to drag it down. So what I'm going to show you now is our decal material that is used for the decal actor. So I'm going to make an instance of this decal actor in MIGT decal. And we'll open that up. And I'm going to do this, this clumpy snow because clumpy snow on dirt is pretty cool looking. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck my inputs. Go to my clumpy stove, snow. Plug in all the, the height detail map in the normal. You can see here it's, it's showing up pretty, pretty good. Um, we can use palm. Palm on this one is a slider because of something very special that I've got for you. So instead of using the default uh, decal actor that's based on Un Unreal's system, as you can see, it's not going to show. I made something a little bit cool. And we have our own blueprint for the GT decal actor, which I will assign material to. So I'll move that out of the way. Let's go to materials, MGT decal. And now it's we just got to enable all the fun. So let's turn on all this fun stuff here. Palm height. Uh, UV tile. Use radial gradient. All these features are included. Question is, oh, one thing I forgot to mention is I have it set to where it's not accepting decals, which would be very important for this case. So we need to find that toggle box. I think it's under rendering. Receives decals check mark. Ah, there you go. Pops in. Awesome. Bring this back over. Um, and you can see here we've got this radial and height. It blends between the two. But the thing is, whenever you create a material for this material actor, it's not going to run directly off of this material instance. So we can close this. It's all run through the actual actor itself, which is really cool. So I'm going to turn on palm. You can see it's shifting there on and off. Um, we can use radial, or we can just do straight square. Radial is cool because what it does is it blends your height map with the radial blur. So that way you can have a very dynamic shape based off the density and whatnot. Uh, you can clamp the height if you don't want to have that much. You can make the density huge, small, whatever you want to do. It's pretty cool though. It's when you get it going. We can scale this actor up a little bit, so I'm going to scale it X and Y. Oh, wrong way. That way, that way, make it big enough. Oh. You can see that decal looks pretty sweet on top of that dirt kind of blends in really well. There's another option you can do. You can invert the height so you can get the lower pits and fill the lower pits in, which is a pretty sweet feature as well. And one thing I do uh, suggest is when you're using a parallax occlusion mapping, not to go overboard with it when you're doing decals because it, it looks very off when you get to the point based off of how your view angle is. You can, I mean, you can go pretty heavy, but I wouldn't recommend it. I'd recommend kind of doing something fairly similar in light. That way it blends in fairly well. Cool. Looks great. Acts great. So let's move to the last one, the Material GT Landscape. We'll create an instance, MIGT Landscape. And we'll open this bad boy up. This one is a three, three texture set blending for materials. So I'll go ahead and enable all these options here. Take some time to click everything. You can turn on your UV tiling as well if you want to, which it can be important depending on your textile density of your 
textures you're using. And I don't think we'll use Palm for this case, just because of performance. So what we need to do now is we need to create a, a small landscape to test it on. So this is massive. I don't want to do it that big. Um, let's let's look about doing a tiny 7x7. Seven seven. Let's see. Can we get it a little bit smaller? Let's do a 5. No, let's do like 3. 3x3. Three three. I think that's a good size. A good little test. We'll move this out of the way. Actually, let's just do one by one. That way it's nice and tall. Oh, it's my... I can make this real easy. Let's line this up. Make it look nice. And close this guy out for now. Okay, and we'll hit create. As you can see, you can't really see what's going on here. It's because there's no light. I'm going to go to unlit mode to see what's going on. Oh, I got an extra geometry here. I'm going to drag this down to zero. Move it in. And then I'm just going to drag this light in this cube over on top to light it up. So now we can have a nice little lit view. So to get started, we'll open this up and we'll blend between three different materials. I think we'll just end up doing the dirt, grass, thick green, and muddy grass. So let's start with muddy grass. I'm just going to plug all these in. DET, height, normal. Go down to the next one. Let's do grass thick and do base color, DET, height, and normal. Let's go down to the very end. Let's do dirt, base color, DET, height, and normal. Let's set that up. It's all good to go. So now, now that the material's set up, we need to apply this material to the landscape slot. So let's drag and drop our instance to the landscape slot. And go to our landscape tab here. Click on paint to get to the texture section. As you can see, we got our three materials from the materials we assigned in our instance. But now we need to set our uh, material info. And I have some preset, but if you want to create some new ones, you create layer info and use the weight blended layer normal and it'll ask you to save it. So I'm just going to set these as presets to get started. And we can just get started painting on our, our texture. I like to go into unlit mode to kind of see what I'm doing. And see, the base base texture is the, uh, the muddy dirt. The textile density is pretty noisy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scale this down so we can just see it in nice big size. So 0.25 on each. I'm just going to do that for the rest of these. That way we're good to go. And you just easily, you can select each layer that you want to paint on, let it kind of compile as it's going. Every time you, you start a new layer that's not been compiled, you can see here I'm blending in the regular grass with this muddy grass. And then you can, oh, and again, compile the new layer, let it go. And I'm going to start painting in the dirt. Look at that, I'm blending in, it blends with the height maps for each, so you can get some pretty cool details. And that's basic to get you started with GT Shade. Hopefully, it's pretty easy to understand and get going, get your projects kickstart without any hassle.